よっしゃ行こう町の声いっぱい拾ってラジオのネタにしちゃえ I'll give this show a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I was hoping for this to be something real good, but it ended on an average note, slightly above but still average, I guess. Okay, I may have a bias towards the fantasy medieval genre at the moment, but this rating could have been lower if I followed a criteria that only The Witcher or Avatar could meet. As a slice of life anime, I still think that this is a good watch. It piqued my curiosity since I have little to no knowledge about how the radio industry works. This is not the first time I've watched a show that's enthusiastic about a niche, like Rail Wars, for example, was all about the train industry and it was also a good watch, but that's for another video. I am aware that shows like these may seem realistic, but when you take a second look, they're actually not. Some parts might be exaggerated, and some aspects of the niche are probably missing as well. So, taking the info presented with a grain of salt. I made a mistake when I tried using some recipes and techniques from Shokagaki no Soma once, I know. I should have seen it coming and all, but it was tempting to try some of them, okay. Now, Nami Yoki i h e k u r was a good show. The comedy was just enough to get things going, but it was unfortunate that they had to use a future event as a hook for an intro just to get the audience's attention. Although, I do understand as well that the title itself, when translated to English, Wave, Listen to Me, is actually boring, so that's not going to attract a lot of people in the first place. In fact, I almost skipped this because I assumed it was another one of those idol slash singer themed shows, but then after seeing the cover, I gave it a shot. Yeah. There are times when judging a book by its cover can be somewhat good. The story follows the life of Minare Koda, a spunky woman who's been struggling to make meat's end. Her situation was caused by her ex boyfriend who stole 500,000 yen in the course of their relationship. In order to continue living in Sapporo, she took a job at a restaurant called The Voyager, but unfortunately, the pay was still not good enough and the deadline to pay her bills were getting closer. So one night, as she regularly drowns her sorrows with alcohol, she ranted her grievances to a stranger named Matu, and the gears started to move right there. No, they did not have sex, that's for sure, but this started her career as a radio talk show host. Unlike most of the shows that I have reviewed at the moment, this one does not have a team of protagonists. You could say that this is a one woman show. Sure, there are other characters that seem to have their own plots playing out, but they were not fleshed out completely. In fact, I suspect that bits and pieces of the story were cut because they tried to cram in as much source material as possible and focused the story on Minare. This is why I couldn't give this a 7, it was so apparent that something was missing that I had to check why Maki Tachibana was significant to the story, and there was a hint of hype with Madoka Kai's hero as well, but it was not explored enough. See, in the anime, their interactions were minimal. In the manga, they have a full on discussion, there's drama, and character development. This is the harsh reality of adaptations, from the novel to its live action, the quality diminishes like a message relay game. Most of the time, but not necessarily, live action copies the plot of the anime and cuts the usual four hours of content into a one hour movie, so imagine how much of the plot is summed up and what was removed entirely just to fit everything. Anime studios copy the manga. But unlike live action, they had the option of adapting just a few of the first chapters, not a whopping 30. Like, seriously, why? Minare as a character was really good to focus on, but it was at the cost of making the side character's existence detrimental to the plot. I suspect that there would be no second season for this, I may be wrong, but that's my theory as to why they had to cram in and slash parts of the story. Oh well, the good thing is that she is really relatable. A flawed character works well in a comedy, she's prideful yet easily deflects from conflict even if it's humiliating. Her personality is bright and cheery, which makes her stand out so easily since the people around her are somewhat serious, and her character goes well with the talent of speaking smoothly, but with a fast pace, which was the thing that Matu caught on as he was humoring Minare while she was drunk. His methods of recruiting were very sketchy. Actually, it should be illegal, but hey, it's the reason why the story is interesting to begin with. 
So the next day she heard her drunken self on the radio while she was working on the restaurant, she remembered where the stranger worked and rushed to the station in an attempt to stop the broadcast, but as she arrived there Matu was able to convince her that this was actually an opportunity to work on the radio industry and ironically she extended the broadcast by commenting on the very illegal recording, hey, you lawyers out there can say all the BS you want, but that didn't work out for Snowden right? Yet it's an extreme example and I know that the media can get away with shit like the public figure doctrine, but whatever. Unfortunately the pace became slower from here because she wasn't fully employed to be a talk show host yet. Surprisingly the slow transition as she juggles her day and night job was still fun to watch, as much as we want her to do radio as soon as possible it at least made sense that there are things that needed to be established first, like preparing the time slot for her segment, and answering questions like who's her ex, and presenting the reality that you can't just leave one job for another right away. The beauty of Slice of Life is that it tries to get some things from reality accurately. Although, you should always remind yourself that anime tends to exaggerate, so don't just record someone in secret and not expect any repercussions. I was traveling when I viewed this show and it made me think that radio was dead as well just as Minari thought earlier. There's live streaming, Twitter, and with the advent of 5G, so not too soon an internet connection is going to be as broad and easily accessible as old radio was back in the day. Although, I immediately thought of a situation wherein a catastrophe happens and most likely, radio is going to be the best source of info out there while everything else will struggle just by regaining power. Not too long after, episode 12 played out the scenario so perfectly, it was so satisfying knowing the moral of the story just before it's revealed. Sure it's arguable that the real moral of the story is that you should adapt to the situation you are in just like her and never give up on trying your best, but most shows like this actually want viewers to appreciate the niche that the story focused on. To be specific, it makes the next generation see the importance of a still existing industry, and it sparks this motivation to be a part of it someday. Like who doesn't want to be a voice that helps the people in times of crisis? So an earthquake hit Sapporo while Minare was doing her show, instead of panicking she immediately tried her best as an impromptu newscaster that helps keep most of the people calm as they get informed of the situation. The story was open-ended, but it can serve as a standalone even with all those loose ends with the side characters left unresolved, despite not being as extraordinary as defeating a great evil, the show made me satisfied of the conclusion nonetheless. She was still a semi-regular on radio and she kept her job at the restaurant, and her debts are yet to be paid. Oh well, the visuals were good, although, the texture of some surfaces can be rough on the eyes sometimes. Then again things might be different in a 4K screen. The music was unnoticeable, but the opening song had potential, it was mundane I guess. The intro of the song's music video was so cool though like look at this. The ending song, however, was so good. Harumi's pride really works well with the theme of the show and it's definitely something that you'd hear on the top charts in radio and of course on Spotify. The plot, could have been better if they just adapted like maybe 20 chapters, and not cut out some parts of the side character's story. Also, the jumbling of timelines is unnecessary, the manga actually had better pacing. Like for example the manga resolved the ex-boyfriend matter first before moving on to the mystery of this horror episode, which makes her less obsessive about her ex due to moving on much earlier. All in all the show was average. Hopefully this gets a redo, although, I doubt most new animes have that liberty to begin with, if the studio proves me wrong and it gets a second season then I hope loose ends get resolved quickly just to make up for what the season lacked, meaning this was an incomplete story. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed Nami Yoki Itakura as well despite of what it did wrong because it also did a lot of things right. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.